Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I'm talking about how to rest without feeling guilty. Guilt is something that comes up a lot around people who have anxiety and trying to take care of themselves. We also feel like we are a burden sometimes because we have our little anxious idiosyncrasies and we don't want to act like we can't get everything done and so heaven forbid we should really rest. But I want to tell you today, you not only need to rest, you need to rest without feeling guilty. So I wanted to start today with our quote, because I think it sets us up nicely for this conversation I'm having with you. And this is from Marcus Aurelius. He said, when you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. And again, it was Marcus Aurelius. I think that it's important that we pay attention to the idea of valuing, not only waking up in the morning, but the fact that we rested and now we are able to go on with our day with all of those beautiful things in mind to be alive, right? It comes after a good rest. So valuing our rest and valuing it enough that we don't feel guilty for taking rest, whether it be our sleep at night so we wake up feeling refreshed and ready to enjoy a beautiful day, or whether it's resting during the day and gathering ourselves. We need to do this for ourselves. No one will make this time available for us. And That's why we can end up feeling guilty because we have to carve this out ourselves. And guilt plays into our anxious feelings. Guilt is a heavy load to carry. It signals that there is a problem. There is something wrong. And all of those heavy danger things that we carry around just are telling the amygdala to hit the danger button for the brain to go red and into survival mode, looking for safety when we really have many other things we could be doing. So we have to realize that we won't do what we don't value. We really won't make the changes unless we begin to value the idea of being rested. We've probably put that out of our minds completely if we are just running from scheduled appointment to scheduled appointment, moving forward, not paying any attention to the day, or being aware of our own self, our own introception. How are we feeling? Where are we at inside our own bodies? So we won't do what we don't value, and we need to start valuing our rest time. Stop and think about the value you put on your rest time. Just think about it for a moment. Now think about the value you put on the rest time of those you love or those you care about, people you either work for or in your family, whatever. Do you think less of them for resting? Somehow we put ourselves in this whole different category that we have to be different, but we don't. We want to realize that we're healthy because we care for our physical and emotional needs. And we value taking care of our body to have the vigor and the needed energy to fulfill our life purpose. Putting yourself last can be a habit, right? This might be just a bad old habit. It can be a codependent behavior, It can be a way of being, of overgiving so as to feel superior to others. 
a way of doing more than those around us. We learned this somewhere along the line. We didn't wake up today and say, I want to feel more superior than others. We learned these things along the line. But when we know better, we can do better. And we know better by paying attention to what we are actually doing, what we are actually valuing in our lives. Getting enough rest is got to be a priority because when we are rested, we rejuvenate our energy. Relaxation and rest time is when we can recharge our batteries and clear our heads. And this makes us so much easier to be around and to do all the things that we so desire to accomplish. When we're rested, We feel in control of our emotions. This is super important to remember. When we are rested, we are in better control of our emotions. We're probably not really fully in control of our emotions ever, but we are more in control. We're more aware. And therefore, we can take those pauses and make the best decisions for our own lives. The brain gets a break from everyday life's constant demands during designated relaxation times. And you can give yourself this much needed respite to think clearly during critical times. And especially when we are working our way out of the wormhole of anxiety, we need to give our brain a break from the constant demand of daily living. This is the nonstop action external. I know you have the internal nonstop action too, but we have to start somewhere. And if we can rest our physical body, we give our mental selves a better chance of being able to be in a healed, calm, and centered manner. Before I continue, I want to thank today's sponsor, Calm. Do you remember being tucked into bed with your favorite story and dozing off even before you got to your favorite part? Sounds like something we would like to do in the middle of the day for our rest periods, right? With Calm Sleep Stories, you can pause your racing thoughts relax your mind, and enjoy the ease of drifting off to dreamland. We're partnering with Calm. They're the number one mental wellness app to give you the tools that improve the way you feel. Reduce stress and anxiety through the guided meditations, improve focus with curated music tracks, and rest and recharge with Calm's imaginative sleep stories for children and adults. There's even new daily movement sessions designed to relax your body and uplift your mind. If you go to calm.com slash ACP, you'll get a special offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription and new content is added every week. Over 100 million people around the world use Calm to take care of their minds. Calm is ready to help you stress less, sleep more, and live a happier, healthier life. For listeners of the show, Calm is offering an exclusive offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash ACP. Go to C-A-L-M dot com slash ACP for 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library. That's calm.com slash ACP. So we want to get into the place where we are scheduling times of rest during our very busy days. I know it sounds almost impossible, but once you start doing it, you're going to realize that this was necessary all along. And it was probably a missing piece in why you couldn't really seem to get ahead of the game, why you always felt like you were behind the eight ball, right? So We want to respect the periods in our schedule that we designate for relaxation. 
the times where we are unavailable for other tasks. This doesn't have to be a big deal. This is not me asking you to go to the spa, to go away for a weekend with the girls or the guys. It is carving out a half hour, 15 minutes, five minutes, different places in your schedule that you can have for you for relaxation, dedicated to relaxation. And remember, during these times, I want you to be unavailable for other tasks. This doesn't mean scrolling through the email to make sure nothing super important came in. Everything shuts down just for those few minutes. Making yourself unavailable for other tasks can be challenging. And, you know, at times it's going to feel like it doesn't even make sense to do it because it's going to feel like it's, it's less important than all the other things you have to do. Really, if you are thinking like that, it makes the time out for rest even more essential for you. You know, it's been said that if you don't have an hour to meditate, you need to meditate for two hours because you are that far behind on being able to take care of yourself. You need even more. So keep that in mind. Make yourself able to do this. So no matter how hard we work, there's always going to be something else that can be done, something left on the to-do list, right? So I want you to draw a line in the sand and say, enough is enough. This is my rest time. Boundaries around our time are non-negotiable. You have to be strong with this. And we're so used to being perhaps people pleasers or just down on ourselves that we don't deserve to take a break or just in the habit. A lot of this could just be habit that you go, 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 go. So the boundaries are yours to make and they are non-negotiable. Only we can set these boundaries for ourselves. I remember thinking back in the anxiety days of my own that I wished someone would give me a break. (laughs) I, I wished that someone would give it to me, give me the time off. No one is coming. That's what I have to say today. No one is coming to give you a break. We need to do this for ourselves. Another point for not feeling guilty about getting your rest is setting a time for yourself that every night you have a point in the evening that you stop, a designated time, a stopping point, and stick to it regardless of what happens. No more folding the laundry, no more preparing for tomorrow's work meeting, no more getting the kids this and that cleaned up, picked up, whatever. If everybody's snug in bed and you have your designated time and it comes up, it's time to quit. It's time to stop. It's your job to set the boundary and it's your job to keep it because there's a point at which you are going to benefit more from having an efficient rested body than from longer hours of working, whether that mean working family, working work, even creative projects can take us beyond our own energy levels. So this is a tough one because We feel like we can just, if we could just get this last few things accomplished, we'll be ahead of the game for tomorrow. Anybody had that feeling? I am extremely guilty of this. If I could just finish up these last few things, I will be ahead of the game tomorrow. And then tomorrow I can rest and feel more at ease. Unfortunately, this just isn't true. It never works out this way. Tomorrow's work will fill the time available. You've probably heard of Parkinson's law, right? Parkinson's law says work expands to fill the time allotted for its completion. 
So I'm here to tell you that rest is really the better bet. You want to take time to rest your body and you want to rest it free from guilty feelings. Remember that. Feeling bad about taking care of yourself, that's an issue. And that's something that you can work through because it doesn't mean you're a bad person or you're doing your life wrong. It means that you have gone through up to this point, doing things that have just created that kind of a mind map. You feel like if resting, you feel like you shouldn't be doing it. You should be doing something else. This can change. We do these things. Again, we we are either taught them, we pick them up from culture, we pick them up in school, whatever. Parents, new work environments, our own self-pressure to be the best, right? but we need to take care of ourselves and choosing to take time to rest your body free from guilt is going to take you much further than driving yourself to the point of exhaustion. And that may come if you do not find ways to get rest and relaxation guilt-free. So you want to release your mind from the demands of life and allow yourself to be swept away on the wings of relaxation. You want to make it something you look forward to. Resting and sleeping plentifully increases your rejuvenation, your peace, and your calm. It's super important that you give yourself this beautiful gift that no one else is going to give you because no one else can give it to you. I know for myself back in the day, if someone had come and given me a break that I was looking for, I still somehow would have found a way to work through it or do something more for somebody else. I was just stuck in that. I'm not anymore. I'm not perfect by any means. Let me say that but I can so much more now let go and rest. And I want you to do that too. Totally guilt-free. I have a few self-reflection questions that I'd love for you to put into your journal and just write these out for yourself. I want to give you a little tip. If you don't like journaling because you feel like somebody's going to read it, One of the things I learned from doing Julia Cameron's morning pages was that we learned to rip them up. You can do your journal pages or these uh, self-reflection questions, and you can rip them up and throw them out afterwards. That's fine. Or, Or soak them in water or burn them, whatever's appropriate for you. But the point is to actually stop just having everything run around in circles in your head and put it on paper or your computer if you must, so that you can see it. You can actually spend some time formulating some answers. Okay, before I get off on a tangent, here are the self-reflection questions. The first one is, what feels like the best bedtime for me? Now, remember, there's no right or wrong answers here. This is all just food for thought. The second one is, how do I benefit from resting enough? The third one, why is it in my best interest to create the time for relaxation? And the fourth and final question, what times can I schedule for rest? Take the time to write these questions and answers out. It's your first step toward resting without guilt. I so love being here with you, and I appreciate you tuning in and listening to the show. I'll be back before you know it. That's it for today's episode. And before I read today's quote, I want to put out a personal invitation to those of you who would like to take your healing, and your clearing of your anxiety panic to another level. If you are not 
someone who wants to join a group coaching program, you may be interested in joining in with me on Coaching One-on-One. You can learn more about that at the website, anxietycoachespodcast.com, and go to the one-on-one coaching page. Feel free to send me an email, anxietycoachespodcast at gmail.com, with coaching in the subject, and I'll be sure to get back with you, and we'll take it from there. No need to have this drag on forever. And now for today's quote. When you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. And that's from Marcus Aurelius. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com. 